This is my Teslapo phone. I call it Teslapo because it's an iPhone with Tesla batteries inside. I originally used five Tesla Model 3 2170 cells, but it was too big and heavy. So I downgraded with six LG 3400 mAh 18650 cells. These cells have the same capacity as the cells that come from a Tesla Model S. And sometimes if I use it a lot, it only lasts for about two weeks and I have to charge the phone. That's pretty pathetic. And I'm tired of charging the phone every two weeks. So today I'm going to upgrade it with a solar panel so that I never have to charge my phone ever again. So today's project is to install the solar panel on the phone. Let's get started. I'm going to install this solar panel on the back of the phone and coincidentally this solar panel fits perfectly on the back of my phone just like that. The back cover of my phone is a piece of EVA foam which is about to uh, peel off because the glue is getting old. So I'm just going to peel it off anyway because this solar panel is going to replace this piece of foam to become the back cover of the phone. Let me show you this fun fact on my phone. Let's go to setting and then we go to battery and then we go to battery health. Check this out. This phone last charge is on September 15, 2023. Today is February 29, 2024. Yep, that's today. So it has been almost six months since I last charged the phone. And the phone's state of charge has always been 1%. How funny is that? So here's the plan. The battery pack on the phone is a 6B battery pack. So I've got 6 18 650 cells in parallel. So the total capacity is about 20 amp hour, but it's only 4 volts. So I need a charge controller for the solar panel. And this is my charge controller. It's basically just a TP4056 board. Nothing special here. And the power from the solar panel is going to go to the TP4056 board. And the output is over here and it will go straight to the battery pack. The TP4056 board has a USB port which I don't need so this port is going to be removed and I'm just going to use the terminal on the sides here. This is the solar input and that is 5 volts from the 5 volt solar panel and the output is over here and it will go to the battery. In order to mount the solar panel onto my case. I'm just going to use hot glue and just glue it on the back of the case just like that. I cut out some small grooves and that's because it's got wire on the back of the solar panel so uh, without the groove the panel is going to stick out too much so that will make the panel flush with the case. Here it is. I glue it on the back of my phone using hot glue and it's tight, not going anywhere. And during the process, I also accidentally heat up the side of my phone and the glue came off, so I have to redo the side of the phone. That's why it looks like crap right now. But all I have to do is just put it on the sander and it will be as straight as an arrow. It will look like new afterward. At this point, some of you might ask, is the hot glue gonna melt in the sun? Because I'm gonna put this in the sun anyway, right? The answer is no. The hot glue melting temperature is minimum 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's minimum. Even the hottest part of the planet, and that's in Death Valley, California, in the middle of summer is maximum temperature about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's still 100, over 100 degrees way below the melting temperature of the hot glue. So it will never melt in the sun. Plus, inside this case, 
you got your phone and the battery and both of these are very sensitive to heat so it's more likely that your phone and your battery will die first in the heat before this glue will melt so in that kind of heat you should avoid the sun instead of putting all of this in the sun my next step is to solder the TP4056 board here it is, I got the board glued inside the case got two wires here on this side that's from the solar panel the red and the white wire will go to the battery pack I put tape around the board for insulation so it won't short out I've got all of the wires soldered in now all I have to do is to put the phone inside the case there we go it's like that here we go got everything installed and ready to go I got the TP4056 board inside here I drill a hole so I can see the LED indicator through this hole here on the uh, TP4056 board this charging board is very sensitive to light I'm using a very small flashlight check this out see the charging indicator it's on that means it's charging my battery right now off on off on how cool is that it is very sensitive that means I can charge my battery even with very little light outside and in fact this is so sensitive that it would charge the battery even with regular lighting inside the house I'm inside my studio right now and this is just regular lighting that I use to make YouTube videos and um, the box is covering the solar panel right now but if I remove the box you see that light is charging the battery right now with just some lights I put on the ceiling and that means I can charge my phone even when I'm inside the house at night with just regular home lighting and of course there's not much power coming from a regular light bulb but that's enough to keep it going I'm inside the house next to my window and I just put the phone down below here next to the window and that's enough to charge the phone let's put it to the test shall we what I'm gonna do is to put this in the Sun all day today and then um, I'm gonna come back within 24 hours and if within 24 hours the battery voltage stay the same or best yet more than what I started with then I can conclude that I can run my battery this way for indefinitely without having to ever have to charge my phone ever again so let's measure the battery voltage right now 3.829 okay so we have to remember this number and then we come back within 24 hours to make sure that it's at least the same or more then that means I can run this phone indefinitely without having to plug it in and charge it right now it's 10.42 a.m. Friday March 1st this test I want to maximize the output so I'm outside in the sun in full sun right now you can see it's charging in there right now it's in the middle of the winter so I don't have much sunlight probably have about three maximum four hours of sunlight per day it's very cloudy most of the time so if this works in the middle of the winter that means that this will work any time of the year it is 12 16 p.m. so it's been about one and a half hour let's check out the battery voltage 3.864 volts we started at 3.829 now 3.864 that's about 0 0.03 volts higher than when I started it's working great for such a small solar panel all right let's see it's 5 41 p.m. so it's been exactly seven hours and the Sun is already down let's check on the voltage of the battery 
3.918. We started at 3.829. So it's about 0.1 volts higher than the original voltage. For every 0.1 volts, that's about three to five days worth of battery life for me. The phone's been out here for seven hours, but I only get about four hours of direct sunlight. The rest, it's in the shade. So basically, four hours of direct sunlight gives me four days worth of battery life. That's not bad for a solar panel this size. All right, it is nine o'clock in the morning on March the 2nd. So it is almost 24 hours uh, since yesterday. So just say we started around 10 o'clock in the morning. And after a full day in the sun, the battery voltage went up to 3.919. Let's see the voltage right now. 3.907. So last night around 5.40 p.m. It was 3.919. So right now about 14, 15 hours later, 3.908. So yesterday morning at 10 o'clock in the morning before we charged the phone with the solar panel. It was at 3.829 volts, and now it's 3.9. So the voltage is a lot higher uh, than before we charged it with the solar panel, even after 24 hours. And with this voltage, that's about two days worth of battery life before it goes back to 3.829. So by putting the solar panel to charge it in the sun, not only do I have enough power to run for 24 hours, I even have extra power to run for another two days. That means I can just use this solar panel to charge my phone and use it indefinitely without having to plug it in ever again. And I don't even have to put it outside in the sun. I can just put it near my window and that's enough to charge the battery. That gives me an idea though, because this system is so sensitive to light. It's just a little bit of light is enough to charge the battery. I can just put my phone against any window while I'm traveling. It doesn't matter if it's a car, a train or an airplane. By the time I get to my destination, I have a full battery ready to go. The idea that I don't need to plug in to charge the phone opens up so many possibilities. That means I don't have to worry about the phone if I get stuck in the middle of nowhere. If there's a natural disaster like a hurricane or an earthquake, or if I just simply forget to charge the phone. The sun is always there and it's free. I've got this XT30 connector here that I've been using to measure the voltage of the phone. It goes directly from the battery and I can use that to even charge other phone. So with this solar panel now my phone becomes a powerhouse I can use to charge other phone or do other things with it.